morning, good morning everybody. Tammy Trier, TrierWilderness.com. I am in the She Cave today. It is a beautiful, sunny, snowy day outside. It is just gorgeous and I'd be out there with you but it's quite chilly. I know my machine will freeze up on me so I decided to record up here today. Uh, family has joined us and I am so excited to have uh, my in-laws here they are just such amazing people and I'm just so excited to just be able to relax and to enjoy our holiday season and we're gonna set that off right today because the best thing you can do is go after your family's hearts through their bellies so we'll talk about cookies today too but how are you guys I can see a bunch of you joining me good morning miss Tammy um, I hope you guys are all doing good. I want to show you guys something. Hello, Miss Cammy. I need to talk, talk to you, Miss Cammy. I want to show you guys something. We went uh, to a client meeting on Friday, and we had to take some stuff to the dump for uh, to get rid of our trash. And look what I found. My nice little rocker. Is that not great? How's that for free? I'm so excited. So I sold my other antique chair and replaced it. I didn't have a replacement. I was using a lawn chair actually. Uh, you improvise and that is what we found on Friday and it is in beautiful shape and I thought it was a great addition to my office. So um, free is good and other people's junk is our treasures and I want to, oops, sorry guys. There we go. I just need to plug it in. Make sure we, we've got power I got plenty of sun on the panels today, so I've got plenty of solar power. And as you guys know, the sun powers me as well, so I can't wait to get out in it in a little while. I'm going to move this close. This rocking chair goes back, so further away. Okay, so how are you guys this morning? I've got all kinds of great stuff to share with you. Um, our New Year plans, things that are up and coming, and all kinds of good stuff. So my question to you this morning, I'd like to see you guys pondering. Good morning, Miss Mona. I'd like to see you guys pondering and um, sharing your answers with me. I'm going to be bringing this question up a bunch through today's um, live. But looking back on 2019, what is something that really stands out to you as personal growth or personal achievement? I'd really love to hear your answers because this year that's all we've focused on is um, a new beginning. And you know, for many of you, you thought that new, be new beginning meant for us. And in some ways, I guess we did too, that we would have a new beginning, that we would sell our home and that we would be often doing something new. But we have to remember that those are the things that are in God's hands. We don't control them. We can wish, we can desire, we can ask, but ultimately God is in total control. So um, when you learn to understand that and just seek the joy in the moment, uh, life is quite amazing. And the reason I asked you about uh, looking back on 2019 is because New Beginnings has a lot of meanings. And um, every day we are given a new beginning, as you've heard me mention many times. Um, so I think all of us experienced a lot of new beginnings throughout this year. And I think that we also had desires to change habits and do things better for ourselves, maybe have a better relationship with God. Um, whatever your desires were, whatever your dreams were, because last year I really had you pondering those things, or the beginning of this year, I should say. I'm already talking last year. It's, it's close, but not done yet. Um, but, you know, in the beginning of the year, I had you guys pondering, you know, what your dreams really were, what your desires really were, uh, what you wanted to, to change in your life. And um, one of the things I wanted to point out is, you know, you guys knew I wanted to be doing my journaling. I don't have it up here. I was writing in it downstairs, but um, I have kept that up all year long. It is a first ever. I, I Like I told you, when I was packing up, I found so many journals that just had bits and pieces in it. And 
I really wanted to do that and this year I attained that not only did I journal but I started to draw in my journal and get back into creativity and adding more creativity to my life so that is something that I can look back on very fondly and be really excited about um, I attained and I will continue to attain because it is such a strong habit now and uh, it's a really good feeling how many of you guys have attained new things what are the things that you are seeing as personal growth love you too lady um, something else that uh, I mentioned or will be mentioning in my podcast that goes out on Friday um, you know this was truly the hardest year we've ever experienced and um, looking back on even just last year's trapping videos for example the our morale and our our views were a lot gloomier but because of our faith and because of what we chose to do in our lives and because our walk with Jesus got so much stronger our views and our perspectives have changed and in looking back on that it really really makes my heart sing because last year we were in the you know as I told you guys I don't worry and I don't have fears anymore but when you're when you're living in a life and a world that's upside down as you know it and um, things are hard you know you really can get stuck in a tired and weary place and I think that's where we were where this year we have chosen to just fully trust God and the outcome of things in our lives and um, our perspective is not that advanced we live in the moment we seek joy in the moment and happiness despite the chaos and because of that, um, our lives are so different, but that is also what we're resonating. And when I look back on maybe some of the things we were resonating last year, and granted you were seeing the transparency and the growth, but this year, I, I don't even know how to put it into words. It's just amazing. Um, as I told my mother-in-law yesterday, you know, this has been the absolute worst year ever, but it has been the most amazing. And I shared a podcast the other week being excited about the storm, um, loving the storm, you know, to see the growth that comes from the storm. But the thing is, we have growth that comes from our year to year, too. It's, um, it is, it is our choice, it is our perspective, um, and it's what we're walking out. And you guys have the same choices and decisions and abilities we do and when you look back and you see the growth and where God has brought you not only um, does it empower you but based on what I witnessed just for ourselves I know people are seeing that and we have such abilities to change not only ourselves and our surroundings but other people in our surroundings or other people that you know cross our path so it's pretty it's pretty amazing and when you are able to put into place new habits new thoughts new feelings new life new beginnings um, you know other people want some of that and I think that this year we've created a pretty contagious all of us here not just my family but all of you here have created a community that is welcoming and that is seeing people um, embracing their dreams and reaching their goals and being able to flourish even when you're walking out hard things and and that's important because the storms don't need to be the things that debilitate us they need to be the things that grow us and we need to be willing to be able to be grown grown out of our comfort zones grown out of um, our, our stale habits our our poor thinking and our, our poor talk to ourselves so there's a lot of things we've learned this year um, and I would like I said I would love to get your feedback 
on, you know, looking back on 2019. For those of you that are watching the replay of this, please share what is something that you can really, that really stands out to you on your personal growth and uh, personal achievements. Um, maybe even your family achievements, because many of you have set goals to do something um, more advanced in your homesteading or as a family or embracing things. So be sure to share that too, because you know, when we set dreams and we have plans, it's not only just our personal things. We also do that, um, you know, in our family and in our in our in our home environment. So um, share. I would love to hear this. Now, today, one of the things that we were going to do here is do a cookie exchange. And in the description below, you will find my link at the very top of the um, note for my collection of Christmas cookie recipes. Um, my favorite is listed there. It is my Mammy's um, sour cream cookie recipe and they are out of this world. They have been my favorite for as long as I can remember and my old dog here, he needs to be part of this. Lay down. He's got a small bladder we're finding and it keeps getting smaller. Um, but my Mammy's recipe is a very soft uh, moist cookie and uh, a family favorite and I will share another recipe with you after Friday because at Thanksgiving I added pumpkin to these cookies and it just was amazing but I I like to alter recipes but I didn't keep track of what I alter, how much I altered entirely so I'm gonna make them again on Friday and I will share that recipe with you too so it would be a sour cream pumpkin cookie um, but in the description or in the comments below, please leave your recipes that you want to share. Um, I, I love baking. I love cooking. I love being in my kitchen. That's not true for everybody. But something I've always enjoyed is baking Christmas cookies with the Mountain Boy. And we will be picking him up tomorrow. He is coming back from Job Corps tomorrow and will be here till the 6th of January. So we will have a nice long visit and... Um, we're going to go and get our Christmas tree probably Saturday and uh, just make the house festive. Um, you know, we celebrate Christmas uh, and, and the true reason for the season uh, for uh, celebrating Jesus' birth. But I have always loved this holiday for that reason, but I love the greens. And I've been doing my advent calendar this since, you know, for December. And it's just been pretty interesting how some of these things came into place. Um, the Christmas tree and the meaning behind the Christmas tree, the candy canes, the wreaths. Um, just to give you an example, you know, the wreath was formed because um, it is a never-ending life circle. And that represents uh, Jesus. So, um, and the tree uh, was just seeing God's beauty and... Uh, they had done a play and put apples on the tree and it just kind of stuck in, in Europe and um, I'm trying to think of the other ones and then adding the lights to the Christmas tree, the story behind that. So, you know, we can still decorate our homes to look like a country Christmas and to enjoy those aspects of the holiday. We do not get involved in the commercial side of it at all. But we've created some traditions here, and one of which is going out and getting our tree as a family and, and uh, just getting festive and, and decorating things. We're surrounded by tall timbers. It, it's just a crime not to have wreaths and greens and that beautiful smell through my home. So, um, but we also celebrate the birth of Jesus and uh, pay great attention to that as well. But I love being able to have those traditions, and one of which, like I said, is, is baking cookies with my boy. Now, I see you guys have said other things here. Mona says, thank you for sharing your recipes because they are super delicious. Love your pumpkin rolls. I'll be making those too on Friday. Um, that's one of my father-in-law's favorites as well as my men's, so they'll be fighting over that. Um, Tammy says, I will put my recipe in the comments after the live. Awesome. Love it, and thank you. Uh, good morning, Ken. Good morning, Miss Shelley. Yes, Jesus, Jesus is the reason for the season. And, um, you know, that's something that we truly need to remember. So many people get caught up in the commercial side of things. But when you remove the commercial side of things, um, what is left is the most important. And it is why we celebrate this. And God is so good. 
God has done so many things for us, my family, but for all of us. And we are all given that same gift that, you know, he was, he was born with such a huge purpose to, to save us all. And it's something that we really need to realize and remember and to focus on. I'm going to get back to that because there's more to this today. Um, so be sure to share your um, cookie recipes because I love trying new recipes. Um, what's unique is we have people joining us from all over the United States, all over the country, and to have different recipes being shared um, from different places uh, is really, really awesome. Do you guys know the story behind the fruitcakes and how they started? Porridge was something that was a breakfast traditional, and, and as porridge, as time went on, porridge got expanded to adding dry fruits and nuts, and it eventually turned into a fruitcake. So our recipes have stories and uh, traditions passed down. So that's why I really love getting recipes from all over the place. I know we have a couple people following from the UK, a couple people following from Australia, um, and a lot of Germany people as well. Share your recipes. You guys have great recipes too. Um, I have a friend from the UK who uh, does the, uh, it's Keto Jane. I believe her website is ketojane.com, but she's got the recipe books that I've shared with you in the beginning of the year, and uh, I love getting her recipes and just seeing how other countries do things, what some of their traditions are. If there's any story behind your recipe, share it. Um, honestly, I don't know where my grandma's recipe came from. I know that it called for butter-flavored Crisco and oleo, oleo being butter. Um, of course, you know I modified that. Uh, I do not use plastic, Crisco. Um, when you go back further generations, you were using lard. Lard is actually a very wholesome fat. People don't think so, but it doesn't have all the additives and preservatives in it like Crisco does. So, I don't know how old that recipe is um, or where it came from, but it makes me think of my grandmother all the time. and. I really treasured my grandparents. I've shared that with you guys before. So it's something that when I'm making it, uh, a lot of reflection happens there. A lot of memories resurface and they're always good memories. So the other thing is too, when I bake with the Mountain Boy, which has been something that has gone on since he could stand on a step stool and be in the kitchen with me. Um, it's no, it's, it's no secret that he loves to eat, but he loves to help too. Like I've told you before, he's been a, a avid canning partner as well. He loves being in the kitchen with me. And that was um, carried over into when he was in his apartment as well. He loved baking and, and cooking. And um, so we can instill a lot of things in our kids. But during that time too, there's a lot of memories being made. And I hope that when he's older, and, and baking the sour cream cookies that he's reflecting back on some of our times too. So, you know, traditions are good. Not only are habits good, new, good habits, but so are traditions, good traditions. And it's just something that's fun to keep going or to create your own. And when we got out here, like I told you guys, we, um, we got out here and we're in a place where we were able to kind of fall away from some of the past traditions that we were part of and we're able to create our own traditions and I'm really glad we had that opportunity. Some of the things that we do are still things that we did as, as children ourselves, just maybe a little different, but it was a really fun experience especially to share that with the mountain boy and um, I don't know. You know I love my family, so it's been a really awesome time here. It is hard to fathom that in 2020 we are going to be here 10 years. That is just insane. I don't even know how that happened. But I see 2020 being an absolutely amazing, amazing year with extreme amounts of growth. Um, you know, we were anticipating a new beginning um, 
of moving on from here. But like I said, God always has different plans. God has a great sense of humor. Um, and God's timing is always best. But there have been so many other new beginnings. Mountain Boy uh, was in his first apartment. The Mountain Boy is now off at school. Um, just so, so much. So, so much. And just our growth and our walk with God and our perspective on things and our view on life and uh, oh my goodness there's just been so so much so so much and it's so amazing Mona says remember Austin baked my birthday cake yum yes he is he is a very good baker so um, teach your kids there's nothing wrong with men knowing how to cook and bake I actually think that's an awesome awesome trait I've told you before, the mountain man is a killer cook, not only in the kitchen, but on the open fire from his time in the backcountry and guiding. So um, it is a great skill and uh, life skill as well and produces really yummy treats like Mona said. So <laughs> now I want to share with you my ideas for the new year. Um, also, share with me some of your, your holiday traditions, some of your uh, thoughts on uh, some of the memories that come back to you in your kitchen when you're baking, and also if you enjoy uh, feeding your family's hearts through their stomachs. I know many of you do. I know Miss Tammy does a lot of baking as well. Um, and I know Miss Shelley does some baking too. Geez, sorry, my dog is making really awful noises. <laughs> um, my theme for the new year is going to be faithfully forward, is what I'm going to call it. Um, it's important to always stay in a forward motion regardless what it is you're going through. And more importantly, uh, keeping your faith at the front. Um, you guys know the dynamics of our home. God is first in everything for each of us. Uh, by putting God first, we can be the best that we can be because our focus is on Him. And then taking care of ourselves next is the next important thing. And it's not out of selfishness or pride or conceit. It's because when we take care of ourselves, we can be the best person we can be refreshed and renewed and able to care for our families. So, um, but faithfully forward is my new theme for the new year. And I hope that you guys will be joining me on this. A lot of new and exciting things are going to be coming your way. Um, not just with me, but with me and the mountain man. And Cammie says, I love to bake, planning on baking with Sadie and the kids this weekend. Awesome. Oh, I can just picture her in your kitchen. She's going to be a hoot. You ought to video that. <laughs> oh, Cammie's got a beautiful little, and she is just such, she's so smart and, and just so funny. She's, she has got a very awesome personality, and she is such a, just, oh, she's so precious. <laughs> I love her, and I've gotten to enjoy her quite a bit, and I thank Cammie for that greatly, because she's just so sweet. <laughs> um, and like I said, Cammie, you and I need to chat later. I've been wanting to message you for about a week now, um, so I will message you when I am done here. Um, in addition to doing the new theme for the Facebook Live, it's going to be Faithfully Forward, and I'm going to do a little bit of experimenting over the holidays. I may switch these live videos to Instagram. However, I am pretty certain it will also feed to Facebook. So you'll be able to join both places um, is the hope. Um, I'm going to do a little playing around. So we're going to um, do some test runs on that and I will keep you posted on that moving forward. Good morning, Miss Diana. I hope you are feeling better, girl. Cami says, oh, thank you. She loves you guys too. Yes, mess. I will message you. Um, I have a little video of uh, Cammie's daughter Sadie playing the harmonica here when she was, gosh, how old was she? She was so little, but it was, oh my gosh, it was so precious. Um, in addition to my new theme of Faithfully Forward, um, we're going to do a lot with that, but I also have a challenge for you guys, and this is a pretty hefty one. Um, some of you may not want to participate in this, and it's okay. Um, you don't need to let me know right now that you're going to participate in this. But um, 
I am feeling really nudged to do a bunch of things. God is taking me out of my comfort zone right now. And as a result, we'll probably take our family out of his comfort zone as well uh, moving forward. We will see how this goes and what his plans are. But he's been instilling some pretty wild thoughts in me lately. And um, there have been like two or three different things um, that will be... The doors are opening for, but the one that I want to really promote today, I'll share the others later as they come to fruition. Um, one of the things that I really want, I'm going to be focusing on, um, my growth over the last three years has been a result of my walk with Jesus. Um, the Holy Spirit has called me out on a lot of things. Um, Mountain Man 2, you know, like I said, our videos last season for trapping were a lot gloomier, where this year, it's, it's just like a total turnaround. And that is because of our perspective and our walk and, and realizing that we can trust God 100% with everything that He does truly have our best interest in mind. I mean, it's not that we didn't know that, but what, we, we, what we've been walking out the last three years has been really raw and really difficult and has taken us to new places and new heights. And as a result of that, it's because the Holy Spirit has been calling us out in a lot of different ways. Um, we focus on things different. We view things different. We uh, live different. And I want to challenge you guys to focus on what Jesus would do before making any decisions in 2020. So if you want to, you know, if you realize that you want to join me right off the bat and you're in on that, great. If you need time to think about that, to determine whether that's something you want to commit to, um, that's up to you. But we are moving faithfully forward and we are focusing on making our decisions based on what Jesus would do. So um, that is your challenge for the new year if you want to take it. Uh, to join us in, in being certain that every decision we make is something that Jesus would do. Uh, let's see here. And I hope that my fingers are working today. My skin is really bad. We've been being little elves. Awesome. I see Diana says she is all in. Fantastic. Good deal. Okay. I can't get this to open. I'm still fighting with the screen. Okay. Diana says... Still hacking, but not feeling as tired as the last few days. Awesome. Well, we're continuing to pray for you. Um, I'm glad you're feeling a little bit better. Keep resting. Oh, my goodness. This is so funny. Ah, got it. Miss Shelley says, Jim started getting sick last week and has missed two days of work. He had a fever yesterday that broke last night, and his cough is slowly going away. I am now coughing and just got up in time to watch the live. Oh, girl. Sorry to hear that, and I hope you can contain your coughs because I'm sure... Um, with you not feeling well prior and healing that uh, a lot of coughing is not going to feel nice so I will be lifting you heavily in prayer keep us posted on how you're doing girl uh, and I'm glad you could join us and Diana I am glad you are in um, nothing like a good challenge is, is how I look at things um, you know we are adventurous people and enjoy challenges new challenges and um, I know you guys have seen God taking us to new heights and to new places and, um, and you've seen a lot of growth in our family and I can't take any of that glory. That is, that is God. And I know that many of you see it that way. And the more we focus on God, the more we focus on being upright. You know, we are all sinners. We are all flawed. I am no exception. I've told you guys that before. But the more upright we walk, the more of an example we are to the world around us, the more wholesome our lives become, the more joy and happiness you see forming in your lives. And you guys have seen that so true in, in ours. And um, so I'm... Whoa, Go on. Sorry, he's walking under my cord. Ah, go on. Go that way. Old man. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, lay down. Here, lay down. 
Lay down. I know. Lay down. That's a good boy. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> uh, Mona says she couldn't hear me because it's breaking up. Can you repeat what you were asking if we wanted to join, please? Yes, um, I will happily repeat that. And I'm sure it was breaking up the enemy. I'm sure it's fighting me on this one. I am asking everybody to join me in an effort to, in 2020, to not make any decisions without asking the question first, what would Jesus do? Whether it's purchasing a candy bar or making a life-changing decision for yourself or your family, um, to ask if this is what Jesus would do. So that we are fully committed to, to putting God first and that we are fully committed to determining in our lives if we are making the best choices. And, um, and like I said, you don't have to join me um, today if you don't feel comfortable making that decision. Miss Tammy is in. Yes, high fives to you and Diana. Um, I just think it'll be fun. I think that it'll be challenging. I think that it'll be thought provoking and I think that it will be life altering. So as we move faithfully forward, uh, we are committing to God in our lives. And, uh, and as always moving forward, my topic is faithfully forward, but as you guys know, the beginning of my live videos shares something knowledgeable, educational, um, recipes, tips, tricks, whatever, and then we move into our uh, devotional and, and talking about God. I do that so that if people aren't into, um, into the whole thing, that they have the option to learn something um, in the beginning and then, you know, jump off if they don't like the rest. We do that on our trapping videos too. We take a minute to read a Bible verse and, and do a prayer before we hit the trap line. So, you know, it may not be for everybody and we don't aren't shoving our faith down anybody's throat, but I refuse to not share my faith because I might offend somebody. Um, it's not the intention. It's just that it's a, a choice to walk, to share the raw, the real, um, the uncensored part of our lives and this is this is who we are um, so just wanted to put that out there Miss Mona says count me in amen yes 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 awesome good deal uh, I just think it'll be fun and more than anything the growth we as a family here have experienced over the last three years has been so profound and so amazing and our walk with Jesus is so close I mean he is just so present in our lives on a daily basis that I don't want anybody to miss out on that and the way that that happens is by pulling into him having a very close walk with him uh, being determined to learn from the word and also being called out you know we all have room for change me included and as we are willing to embark on that and get uncomfortable in some of the things that we need uh, to change um, May we grow. Diana says, Kim Johnson posted this today. Psalms 116.2, because he bends down to listen, I will pray as long as I have breath. Awesome. Awesome. I love it. And Kim Johnson, I haven't, um, I haven't been on Facebook a whole lot. I share what I need to. Life has just been crazy. And I try to not be involved in too much drama. I like my life simple. But Kim Johnson, if you guys remember, she is the one who lost her husband, Martin, this year. Um, he was the one in the coma. And she is such a faithful lady, such an amazing lady. And she's a perfect example of being grown by somebody else's walk. She really touched me. Um, I am a faithful person seeking God every day, but there's just something about Kim that glows and... and and she, she takes you along for the ride. And Kim shared the other day, I don't know if you guys remember, but when she was dealing with Martin in the hospital and in the different facilities, they were having problems with their minivan. And one of the, she, it got stranded, and next thing you know, someone in the church went out and repaired it for her. You know, God was blessing her on that journey greatly, and God still continues to bless her. She was gifted money by several people to purchase a van, and she's very frugal. She's very careful about her choices, and the right van didn't present itself. Well, she was out on her birthday, I think it was last week, 
and her son was with her. She had dropped the other children off at church, and um, they were sit I forget where they stopped, but anyway, across the street was an auto dealer, and there was a van sitting there, and the son saw it, and he's like, Mom, there it is. And, and she's like, uh, it looks too new and expensive, and, you know, she was a little, didn't, she's like, let's go look at it. So they went over to look at it. And she said it's it's an older van than she wanted. She was looking for something newer, but it was a 2011 uh, E350 uh, van, and it only had 36,000 miles on it. The back seat still had the plastic on the seat belt pieces and were never used. Um, she said it still smells like it's brand new, and the dealership traded it in, and we're actually going to send it to auction, but they decided to was in such good shape and putting it out on the lot and she put in an offer that was less than what they were asking they refused and she was gonna walk and they accepted and uh, so she got her van and you know God's timing God's blessing I mean and then to, to boot she got to meet the person that uh, owned the van and they had only ever used it a couple times to transport uh, goods to um, to uh, like craft shows and different things like that. Bear with me here a second. I should have, oh, no, nope. connection available. There we go. I'm back on. Of course, I moved. Good morning, Chad. Let's see if that does it. Okay, I think we're good now. It was just getting funny on me. All right, so um, I don't remember what I was saying. God is good, though, all the time, and he blessed uh, Miss Kim and what I was saying is it's just nice to be able to see God working around us. Um, through many of you, I have seen God's hand um, through the prayers we've been lifting up for you. I have seen God nurturing some of you um, in some of the personal walks that you've been experiencing. Um, and that's what has been really awesome, being in the seat that I'm in, orchestrating this. You know, like I've said before, I'm just a vessel that God is using, but we are a community and it has just been amazing to see what God is doing. Down below uh, are, is a prayer list. Please keep those in prayer. Um, and if you have prayer needs, you can email me at prayers at treyerwilderness.com. You can leave a comment down below. You can um, private message me. Um, since we're talking about that, I want to uh, ask that you continue to pray for Diana and Shelly and Tammy's daughter, Hope. Um, they're both healing, or all three healing, and could use the extra prayers. I'd like Maybe I'll just venture downstairs. Oh, there we go. I got a green light. Okay. So, um, Terry also still needs prayer for he and June. Um, he has asked for prayer for his marriage, so continue to pray for them. Um, 
and Mark. I've been mentioning Mark lately, uh, Pat, that uh, we've been praying for, for his cancer. His son-in-law, Mark, is going through the same treatments he has had to. Uh, and Mark is in Seattle right now. He went through uh, the stem cell transplant, I want to say Sunday, Saturday, sun, sun, over the last couple days. And it was pretty rough on him and his body. He was very nauseous, uh, really uh, dizzy, really throwing up a lot. So they've got that under control. They were trying to monitor that to keep him from getting dehydrated. But just pray for him. What he is on right now on this leg of his journey is rough. Um, they've been in Seattle, I believe, for over a month. I think he will be there three months, so they're away from home and away from their comfort places and dealing with a lot of, a lot of stuff. So just pray for Mark for healing. Pray for Starry for healing with her cancer. She's doing really good down in Georgia, um, doing natural therapies for her cancer. And also pray for Pat, um with his treatments and such. He's just done amazing. Uh, the infusion he is using to in, uh, increase his immune system to fight the cancer is just uh, working very well for him and I'm so, so thankful. So if you need prayers, you know people that need prayers, please don't hesitate to leave them down below. Uh, we would greatly be honored and privileged to be able to pray for you. As I always say, you do not need to leave details. If you have something personal going on and you need prayer, just telling us you need prayer is plenty. God knows what your needs are. Uh, but we will definitely uh, lift you up and, and get God's attention even more so on you. Because the more we come together and the more we pull together as a community and as Christians, the more um, God hears us. It's not that he doesn't hear us when we're alone either, so don't misunderstand that. He hears you loud and clear. But he's present when three or more are together. So he is right here and I know it every time. Um, I want to mention too, today is the last Facebook Live for 2019. I'm taking a much needed break and pulling together all kinds of new stuff for the new year. And I will be back on the 15th, I think it is. Um, it's the second Wednesday, I think it is. I think it's the 15th. The 10th is on Friday, um, so that following Wednesday is when I will be back with the live videos. Um, the podcast will be out um, on the 10th, uh, starting the new year. Nick Mullen says, Merry Christmas and God bless. Right back at you. Thank you so very much, and I'm glad to have you joining me. I haven't seen your name on here before, and I'm thankful to always see new people. Where are you joining us from, Nick? Now, I want to read something to you guys. Um, it's called Fuel Your Mind. And um, this goes along with our Faithfully Forward and for those of us that want to take on the challenge of um, for 2020. Okay, Virginia. Well, welcome. I'm really glad to have you. Um, 2020, we are going to focus on making the commitment to ask ourselves at any time that we need to make a decision if or to ha to make an action if it is what Jesus would do. So this Bible verse is Romans 12 2, be changed within by a new way of thinking. I love this. It fits so well. Papa always feeds me and shares with me what I need to share with you guys. So what we consume determines our performance. That is both um, internally with food as well as how we feed our minds, right? We talk about that all the time. Um, so that's why you need to be careful what you feed your body, your children, your pets, and even your car. But what you feed your mind is equally important, especially when you consider these two laws that operate in life. One, the law of co cognition. Your thoughts influence your emotions and your behavior. The Bible says, for he, as he thinketh, is in his heart, so is he. That is Proverbs 23, 7. And that is something that I have pushed with you guys all year. If you think you're old, you're going to feel old. If you think you're sick, you're going to feel sick. If you think you're tired, you're going to be tired. Our bodies listen to what we say. Our bodies listen to what we think. I know many would argue that with me. Try it. I challenge you to try it. 
We are our worst critics. We say the most awful things to ourselves. If it is not out loud, it is within our heads. And I have challenged you guys to change that. I have challenged you guys to pay attention to that. And it's really important. So remember that. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. So Jesus said, a good tree, a good tree can't produce bad fruit. And a bad tree can't produce good fruit. In other words, in other words good thinking can't produce bad results, just as bad thinking can't produce good results. So remember that. I'm not able to talk today. <laughs> i got to slow it down. Number two, the law of exposure. The Bible says, do not be shaped by this world. Instead, be changed within by a new way of thinking. So 2020, we are going to be faithfully moving forward. Forward motion is progress and we need to do that and sometimes that may be one super tiny little step at a time you know we all go through ups and downs we all go through rough roads so don't be intimidated by the fact that you need to keep moving forward just focus on the little tiny steps that you can do at that particular moment to keep that momentum and You always think about what you are exposed to the most. And given the violence, lust, and greed portrayed by the media, it's not surprising that crime and immorality are on the rise. You can't just say, I'm going to read this magazine, watch this program, listen to this music, but it won't affect me. Social science now confirms what God said all along. It does affect you. And I've shared that with you for three years now that we've been on these live videos. Where you go, what you read or don't read, what you watch, and the dreams you entertain all shape your mind. Paul writes, remember what Christ taught and let his words enrich your lives and make you wise. So when you need to the right mind fuel, remember, God who, whose gracious word can make you into what he wants you to be and give you everything you could possibly need. So when we move forward and focus on doing what Jesus would do. We are opening ourselves up for an opportunity to be feeding our minds with the right food. And I'm inviting you to join my own personal challenge. There is no better gift than the Word of God and walking out a life allowing God to lead the way. You guys have seen the results of that in our lives. You have seen the results of God nurturing us through an extremely difficult time. I have many people ask me throughout this year, how can you be so happy and joyful and excited when you are walking out what you are? We are walking the same thing and I don't get it. Get Jesus. It's that simple. Honestly, it is that simple. And I, I know that there are people out there that fully don't understand and that don't see the benefits in God and a walk with Jesus. Um, and that's why we do what we do, to encourage and to let people see it being walked out, not just what we have to say. Um, one of the greatest benefits of this holiday season is that the king was born and he was born of flesh and born to experience everything that we will experience there isn't anything that we walk through that he hasn't already walked through he then progressed and and, and walked out the greatest gift to all mankind and we have all been gifted that I've shared this with you before none of us are void none of us are too awful that we can't be saved or loved he died on the cross for our sins while we were sinful before we were even born and he has given us everlasting life. All we have to do is accept the gift that he has put out there for each of us and be willing to try to walk it out in the best way we know how. And the greatest gift to all of us is the Word of God 
every answer for every problem is in that book. And, you know, so many people are like, it's, it's a joke. It's not real. There's no proof. There's a lot of proof. You, you want to dig into that and start looking, you will find there's a lot of proof in the pudding. And if the Bible is such a joke, why is it, um, why is there so many people fearful of it? And why are they working so hard to ban it and get rid of it if, it's, if there's no truth in it? So think about that. But I thought these were great words and I'm going to post this underneath this and maybe you guys want to save it because this goes right along with what we are talking about here in that be changed within by a new way of thinking. Mona says, look at believers, believers faces, they just shine. <laughs> pretty awesome. That's because we feel, the mountain man has been making fun of me. One of the words I use is enveloped. I feel enveloped by God. He's got his arms around me. I said that in one of our trapping videos and he found that very funny and wanted to, an explanation of what that meant. So I just wrapped my arms around him. But that is an amazing feeling to feel the love of God and, and know he is present in your circumstances. Good morning, Terry Perry. Uh, we were just talking about you and lifting and requesting prayers for you. I hope you are doing well and feeling well. Um, we are all going to be lifting you uh, and you need to keep in touch and let us know how you're doing. Any, anything new to report? And I'll t I'm going to repeat this now so that people know. Um, Moving forward, the new theme is no longer new beginnings for 2020, although you will have a new beginning every day if you are seeking God. Um, and I don't know if I said anything about what Mona said there. That is, that is really true um, in that you, you, I did, I said about being enveloped, but you, if your life is filled with God as, as a, uh, Todd White says, when you're squeezed, Jesus should come out. Um, and, and when you live a life focusing on him, um, I can't help but believe that you do shine because he's present. He's ever present. He shows himself. He reveals himself. He blesses. He has a sense of humor. He, he walks you through the good, the bad, and the ugly. And the thing is, he doesn't just walk you through it. He's present the whole way through. You know, a lot of times when he gets silent, people think he's not there. But it's like the thing um, that I've shared with you with the butt in the sand. You know, um, he may be silent because we are needing to learn to make a change or learn to listen or he's been guiding and guiding and guiding giving you the thought over and over again and you keep avoiding it because it takes you out of your comfort zone he's always present um and he will go to great feats to get your attention too if you are on the wrong path or uh not getting what he's teaching so um he's relentless and i'm thankful for that and i hope you guys are too <laughs> All right, and then one other thing I want to share. I just love this. I've been starting to share this every week. Lone Star Farmstead, Christina Sutter, shared in her um, Instagram description. Part of it is, life is a gift given to us by God. What we do with it is our gift to God. And I think that is so awesome. And that's why I am asking, I'm not calling you out. I'm asking you to join me in my walk for 2020. Um... It's going to be awesome. It's going to be awesome, and uh, we are going to continue to move faithfully forward in our situation, and we are going to pray and, and help you guys walk faithfully forward in your situation. Through the good, the bad, and the ugly. We all experience it, and, and that's how it is. So, oh, i got to mention this, too. Um, I'm going through my notes, so I'm, a little, I'm jumping a little bit here, but um, I shared with you... Um, the books by my friend Millie Copper. Uh, I told you that they are like a cozy apocalyptic book. And I'll tell you what, I can't put them down. I am on book four 
and uh, I will be having her on my radio show. I'm hoping that it will be January 10th. Um, she will be joining me and we will be discussing her books. Um, Millie is a special person. Um, she and her family had us build a cabin for her down in Wyoming and uh, a dear friend and uh, these books are just amazing and they're very inexpensive on YouTube or sorry Amazon and you can find them by going to treyerwilderness.com slash Millie Copper but I want each and every one of you to either get these at the library pick these up request them at the library whatever read these books we talk to you all the time about preparedness and the reason for preparedness and and you know out of the box thinking and having backups of everything and um, Millie's books are very thought provoking um, and I really truly feel that everybody should read them to open their minds. Some of you, it might, you know, you'd be like, ah, that's how we think. I mean, that is how we think too. But it still, it still gets your creative juices and out of the box thinking going. And um, for those of you that are new to preparedness, new to prepping, new to homesteading, you need to read these books because they will get you to understand fully why we talk about what we do. It's a, an apocalyptic scenario. And I mean, some of you think about this stuff when the power goes out and the lights go out and stuff, but this gets you thinking a lot deeper and it will get you thinking about things that you may not be thinking about that are necessary. So please pick them up. Um, not only will it help a dear friend of mine, but it will help you and your family too. I guarantee it. And they are easy reads. They are all books that draw you in and you want to keep knowing what's happening next. There's no blood and guts. There's no um, far-fetched uh, zombie garbage. There's no sex. There's no poor language. These are books you could actually read with your family, which will give your kids something to visualize and to also understand. So I highly recommend them, and I also ask that you join me on January 10th on the podcast. One thing I want to mention, too, is that we are going to venture out. I know many of my podcasts are recorded while I am walking in the wild, but I am going to start recording um, video of my podcast. So the podcast will continue to go out on all the podcast apps, but you will also find my live podcast video on YouTube. And moving forward, that will include me, that will include some of my guests, uh, most of my guests are pulled in um, through the internet um, remotely. Uh, I don't typically do face-to-face -face interviews, but that may change. And also, the Mountain Man will be joining me. We've got a lot of new stuff coming up. Uh, once the trap line is finished, we will start doing some other things because it's good to have his perspective and to have him on video. And, and um, we're, I'm going to keep that happening. So... Uh, join us on the Mountain Woman Radio podcast if you are not familiar with that. And I want to also encourage you guys to pick up the book Power of Positive. I've shared that with you before, but if you're looking for a good read over the holidays or through the gray months, um, it's an awesome book and you need to read it. TreyerWilderness.com slash Power of Positive. So guys... Are you ready for your holidays? Are you ready to have your family around? What are some of the neat things you guys are planning to do? Um, I'm looking forward to just relaxing. Uh, the men are out on the trap line. I relinquished my seat to my father-in-law. And my mother-in-law and I are going to do some catching up, some crafting, and hanging out in the Mountain Boy 2, and maybe some movies. But we're just going to just gonna relax we're gonna we're gonna love each other and just enjoy our time together and I'm looking so very forward to it and I'm looking forward to the new year um, like I said this year has been the worst year ever for us but it has been the most amazing I'm not ready to write it off as awful as it has been when you look and see the growth that we've walked out um, and I don't mean just me I mean you guys too. look back on your year and, and um, 
I, the question I had asked everybody in the beginning is looking back on 2019, what is something that really stands out to you as a personal growth and personal achievement? Um, so many of you have also done things and it has been very visible to me. So um, if you don't share here, just think about it. Think about it because um, like I said, as awful as this year has been, I'm not ready to write it off yet, but I am excited about the new year. Um, hard to believe that we have been going to, we're going to be here 10 years. At, uh, this new year will, it's just nuts. But um, something else we are going to do at treyerwilderness.com slash shop. We are adding a lot of new items to our store and there will be a continuous 10% discount on all of our merchandise all year long for 2020 for our 10 year anniversary. Um, I think it will just be set up that it will be automatic on every order. Um, but when you go into the shop, if there's any specific coupon code you need to use, it will be noted in red at the top of the screen. But um, stay tuned. Uh, there I started doing my candles. I think I showed you those last week. And we will. I will be doing my soaps um, starting next week probably. Well, not next week, but the following week. And a lot of other new things are being added so stay tuned for that but guys I really thank you for being a part of our walk you have made our walk so much greater um, you guys I told you every week you've renewed my soul every week your presence here has been renewing your friendships are amazing it is just warms my heart to see what God is doing in our community here and how he has formed this community and how we all just are so well knit together and have each other's backs you know it's been ama an amazing feeling knowing that we have so many people praying for us and I hope that that goes both ways that you realize you are prayed for daily also um, as a whole and as your individual prayer requests come in so I'm just I'm just so grateful I'm so thankful for you all and I look forward to going into 2020 with you all and you know, if you are nurtured by this, share this with your friends. Um, our goal here is to walk out God's will, which seems to be that that is what we are doing here, and uh, to share God's love and what we have experienced here, um, and just so that other people can grow and experience God's love. Tammy says, we are headed over to mother-in-law's on Christmas Day, spending it with her and daughter, son-in-law and grandson, having snacks and opening gifts. Nice. Nice. I'm excited for you and we'll be praying for you. I know that you absolutely love being able to see your daughter and her family. Um, God is good. God has done so many amazing things this year. Um, one of the things that we got to watch was um, Tammy's uh, daughter relocate and, and find a place and, and good work uh, in a new city. So although it's awesome, it has been a little um, new for both Tammy and for me to have some of our our, our kids out and about. Uh, we are empty nesters. Tammy is not. She's still got a full quiver at home. Mona says, happy 10-year anniversary and happy birthday to Glenn. Yeah, our, our, that will be in April, but on, funny story, um, the mountain man said that if he wasn't married by 30, that he was going to become a hermit and live in the mountains and just be a mountain man. So I married him on his 30th birthday on Easter Sunday in uh, 2010. So it was kind of fun. Made, I secured that. And I think I made his mom happy to know that he's not going to be a hermit and a mountain man in the woods. So cutting it close there, but I got it. <laughs> so yes, yes. So we will be celebrating that this year. Uh, 10 years here and our 10 year anniversary. So uh, great thing is too, I married him on his birthday, so we won't forget our anniversary. <laughs> but it is, it's just amazing. And, uh, you know, Time flies fast. This year has flown by so incredibly fast. Warp speed. So all the more reason why we need to learn to live in the moment, um, seek joy and happiness in our day-to-day, -day, and not to focus too far ahead, 
and not to have fears and worries. God will take care of it all. All we need to do is live out the moment and see his blessings. And they are abundant. Trust me, they are abundant. Um, if you haven't started your gratitude journal, maybe that's something you should put into your list of habits for the new year. So maybe do that. Between now and our Facebook Live in 2020, put your list of your dreams and your goals and your desires for new habits on a list. Once you write it down, it makes it a lot more concrete and you're more likely to embrace that. Scratch the New Year's resolutions. They're temporary and they don't happen. You want to focus on creating new habits. So what are those new habits and what are some of the old ones you want to break? That's what you can share with me. That's what I want to know in 2020 because we're going to work on that as we are faithfully moving forward. So I'm going to say a prayer so you guys can get back to your day and I just I thank you guys and I love you. This has been an amazing journey and I'm so glad that God instilled this in me three years ago to start doing these live videos. This is our third year going into our fourth start of our fourth year and how amazing, how amazing. Such growth and such amazing people joining me. So I thank you all. So Papa, I just thank you for your grace and mercy and hand in all of our lives. You walk us through the good, the bad, and the ugly. You're ever present, you're ever knowing, and your sense of humor shines. And that's the thing. We need to lighten up and see the joy and the happiness in our day to day and be willing to laugh at our mistakes, be willing to see the good and 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 laughter is good for the soul. It renews us, it rejuvenates us and it keeps us from fear and worry. And so does God's word. And I just pray that all of you seek him more and more every day and focus on him really heavily in the new year as we are walking faithfully forward and as we are walking out our day-to-day -day questioning if what would Jesus do it's important it's really really important not only to listen to the Holy Spirit guiding us but to question ourselves and to question our choices and to question the reasons behind our choices are we being prideful are we being greedy are we you know, not thinking clearly in our desire to purchase something. Is it, you know, spontaneous rather than necessary? You know, when we really focus more on what would Jesus do, it also affects how we interact with individuals, how we behave, how we love ourselves so much. And I think it's important for us to each reanalyze and to seek God's word and to continue faithfully moving forward, putting God first and keeping our steps in a forward direction. And you know, if you are, if there are people out there right now that are dealing with anxiety and stress and struggle and don't know which direction to go, just take the smallest step possible to just keep yourself moving forward. Do the best that you can. That's all that you can do is just do the best that you can and focus on the small tiny steps that it's going to take to make you get to the other side of whatever it is you're experiencing and know that you're not alone and God I just ask that you wrap your arms around anyone out there that's struggling there are many that go through the holiday seasons and don't find the joy in it because of deaths in the family or dysfunctional families or divorce or so many reasons so loss of jobs so please help those that are struggling this holiday season to see you in it to understand the reason for this season and to trust that you will bring them through this season of their life so just be with them and and nurture them and and give them hope and lord i just ask that you keep everyone safe and and uh just keep your arms enveloped around them and just love them. And thank you for what you're going to do in each of our lives every day and moving forward into 2020. We love you and we ask all of this in your holy and precious name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, guys, I love you all. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year's. Stay safe and enjoy your families and we will all come back together here in the new year and continue to walk each other through the journey called life. We're not alone. We don't need to do it alone. 
And that's the beauty of community. And remember that. Terry Perry says, Merry Christmas to you and your family, my friend. God bless you. Merry Christmas to you in June. May you have a blessed holiday. And you know I will stay in touch with you. And I am praying for your health and healing. And Tammy says, Merry Christmas to everyone. I hope it is a very blessed one. And same to you, my dear friend. And I love you all. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. And thank you for all the love, prayers, and just your friendship. God bless everyone.